Shalom Aleichem. Welcome to our Musar study today. I am so thankful that you're here with me today and enjoying our new month of Nissan. And this is a month of miracles. Shalom, Sergio. Glad you're here. And we are going to kind of take a deep dive today into the world of honor. So we're going to get right to it. What is honor? And what does Hashem have to say about honor? You know, God has told us in the very beginning, as we were coming out of Egypt, Baruch Hashem, this is our uh, festival that's coming up, Pesach. And he says that, I first, first we hear uh, him speaking to Moshe, and he says, I am that I am. So tell Pharaoh, I am has sent you. You know, Hashem's told us that he wants to be a God to us, that he is, he is existence. He is the I am, and there's nothing else but Hashem. And he says, I want you to understand I am, and that I want to be a God to you. So Hashem wants you and I to receive him as a personal God and to understand that there is no other. And therefore, when it comes to honor, honor must first be given Hashem. He is worthy of honor, worthy of all honor, and there is only Hashem. And therefore, honor first goes to Hashem. And then he wants us to emulate this honor to one another. But you know, unless we respect and honor and value ourselves, then we cannot even begin to honor Hashem or to honor other people. And so we have to kind of look at this and dissect it a little bit so that we can better understand and get it thoroughly uh, connected from our head to our heart so that we can be an honorable person. <clears throat> Did you realize that honor is one of our soul traits? That's the reason that we have to really look into it and uh, begin to activate that soul trait that we have been given. It is a precious gift that God has given us, this, this soul trait of honor, because without it, the, we cannot really do anything else for the kingdom of God if we have no honor or respect for God or ourselves, or other human beings. So today's topic is very vital. Uh, it, it's a vital component, as we know, uh, of our soul trait. So what is honor? The Hebrew word honor is kavod. And it really kind of, it, it you can kind of expand it to uh, our work, our worship, and our, ser uh, our service, our abidah unto Hashem. So let's look at work and worship and service and see how it connects with the idea of honor. So what is honor? Well, we've looked at this before. The dictionary uh, tells us that one of the definitions is to have a high respect for, a high respect. You know, some of us um, living here in Texas have problems um, with uh, rattlesnakes. Now, do I hate rattlesnakes? Well, I can't maybe say that I hate them, but I can say that I have a high respect for them, right? So I honor them wherever they, I might happen to see them so that I don't rattle their cage. And so, yes, I have a high respect for a snake. So meaning that I, um, you know, I value um, knowing when it's around, right? So. Uh, the other thing is to have a great esteem. So if we honor someone, we honor Hashem or even ourselves, that it means that we have a high esteem. Now, this is where we can get in a little bit of trouble about esteem, because if we have low esteem for Hashem and low esteem for others, we will also have low esteem for ourselves. So having a good um, ego, a good esteem 
is a good prize to have. We should have, we should esteem ourselves. <clears throat> and we're learning also that as far as other people, you say, we might say, well, as far as honoring and respecting and have a high esteem for someone, they have to prove to me that they're worthy of me honoring and respecting them. But did you know that the Torah tells us that we are to honor someone, even if they're not Jewish, that we are to honor every human being because every human being <clears throat> is a creation of Hashem. And because every human being is a creation of Hashem, we uh, are commanded to respect and to give honor to other people, not if they're respecting and honoring us or somehow treating us with great esteem or whatever, but simply because they are a creation of Hashem. And therefore, that, in other words, a person doesn't have to earn our respect, so to speak, but we are to give, be respectful to everyone because they are simply a creation of Hashem. Um, so to honor, you know, in our day and age, when you think about how do we show honor to someone, uh, we might think about um, uh, someone in the military who has achieved a great, um, has done some great value, um, uh, act of valor, and therefore we give them the um, medal of honor. But you know, Hashem actually has put within us that gift of honor. So basically within us, Hashem has already adorned us, adorned us with a medal of honor. He has said, you are valuable. Every human being is valuable and worthy of being honored and respected. You know, when we think about that, it brings to mind um, the unborn, the unborn babies. They are worthy of respect and honor, and we should protect their lives as well as um, others around us because they are valuable. They're a creation of Hashem, and they are human beings. So this is why we must value and give honor and respect to even the unborn. Number four we're told that honor also means having integrity. Integrity is another one of our soul traits. So it all ties together, respect, esteem, bringing distinction to others, having integrity. And also number five it talks about conferring accolades for achievement. <clears throat> so when someone um, in your community has done something commemorable, it, they, we should, uh, you know, give some kind of an accolade. It should be something that's noteworthy, that that it is told, you know, that they're appreciated, that they're valued, that what they did was a great achievement, or so forth. But it should be made known, and and not just, you know, uh, shoved aside. But we need to show respect and honor to others. And if they have done some kind of great achievement. Uh, well, it doesn't have to be great, but uh, large or small, whatever it is, that, you know, we should talk about it. We should confer the accolade toward them. Sometimes we have to be careful um, that we don't allow jealousy to get in the way. And for instance, if someone gets a new home, um, we, we shouldn't be jealous. We should be happy for them because we're told in Torah that when we are happy, that someone else has achieved something that then it opens up the door for Hashem then to give us, um, you know, some kind of special gift or something that we've been praying for and hoping for and working toward. Another thing that I see commonly, commonly um, in uh, this day that we're in, and that is if uh, someone's children have some kind of achievement uh, that they have uh, acquired. So maybe they've done great in school or they've gotten some kind of honor in school and some kind of achievement and we find out about it. Instead of being jealous that that other family member, perhaps in our congregation, uh, some parent has a, a child that has, you know, had some great achievement. We should 
make mention of it and we should um, let them know how happy we are and how excited we are that their child has done so well in this way or another. Instead of being jealous and just looking for a way to criticize, well, they did good in this. However, they're sure not so great in this, this and that, you know, the blah, 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 which is what? Blah, blah, blah. Lashon hurrah, right? So um, conferring accolade is another way that we can show honor. So today, um, our um, author that we're going to be reading from um, the Holam uh, Hamadot um, tells us that there's some um, things that we need to be aware of. So it kind of starts out... <clears throat> in chapter one, about the dangers of honor. Now, we might not think about that as something to be warned about, but we can, as we begin to study, we can find out that um, sometimes people can get puffed up. Does that make sense? If we show a lot of honor, we have to be careful that we don't get puffed up. If someone... Um, appreciates us and, um, you know, gives us some kind of a compliment, we have to be careful that that kind of honor doesn't puff us up. So there's dangers in pursuing honor. That's another problem. So many um, of us have that low self-esteem, and so we're constantly pursuing honor. So let's talk about that. <clears throat> so the our sages tell us that there's three things that can remove a person from the world. And when they say the world, it's this world and the world to come. And that is three things, jealousy, desire, you know, that carnal desire and the pursuit of honor. Again, jealousy, desire, and the pursuit of honor can remove a person from this world and the world to come. So you can see that it's so dangerous for us to pursue honor. So how do we get around that? Well, <clears throat> so our, our sages explain, um, and Rabbi Israel says that the world refers to both this world and the world to come. And the reason why pursuing honor can remove a person from the world to come is that the pursuit of honor causes a person to stumble into various sins, both a sin against Hashem and then against another person. So how does how does this cause a person to sin against Hashem? <clears throat> if doing a mitzvah or refraining from transgression will cause a person to forfeit some of his prestige or miss an opportunity for honor, he might opt to prioritize his own honor over that of Hashem, whether by sinning fragrantly or by rationalizing that there is a room for leniency in a particular matter. Moreover, the pursuit of honor itself is an affront to Hashem, since we were all created for the sake of his glory, and our purpose is to bring honor to Hashem, not to ourselves. As the verse states, everyone who is called by my name and who I have created for my glory, who I have fashioned, even perfected. Wow. What did he say? He said, everyone who is called by my name and who I have created for my glory, whom I have fashioned, even perfected. <clears throat> wow. Hashem says that, what? Speaking of wealth, he says, I make some poor and I make some prosperous. That's in Shemuel. I make some prosperous and some poor. So therefore, we cannot esteem a wealthy person and not esteem a poor person because we might feel like that the, the person who has a lot of wealth has done some kind of great achievement. Maybe they've really worked hard and, and they earn a lot of honor and respect because of all of their doing. And that perhaps the person that is poor is not a hard worker and is not <clears throat> worthy of esteem. But Hashem says, no, you need to understand <clears throat> that wealth and poverty both come from me. And it's up to me to decide whether a person has wealth or has not. 
but it all glorifies him when we honor God in the circumstance. <clears throat> Our sages have cautioned us not to use the Torah also to glorify ourselves, as it has stated in Avos 4, 5. Do not make them, the words of Torah, into a crown for your own glory. <clears throat> so see, we cannot even um, take the words, uh, our studying of Torah and our great knowledge that we might receive from Torah as a way to get puffed up. Have you ever known someone that thinks so much of themselves because they feel like they have so much knowledge? They seem to think that they have knowledge about a little bit of everything. You know, they're just so full of knowledge that they they become puffed up. Doesn't the Torah tell us that just knowledge by itself does puff us up? So we have to be careful with that. Just thinking that <clears throat> if all we do is sit around and we just study and study and we just gain knowledge, gain knowledge, that it can puff us up. It's kind of like if all we did every day is just ingest literal food, just eat, eat, eat. Are we going to get puffed up? Are we going to be unhealthy? Well, did you know that if we are just ingesting Torah, and ingesting Torah, and ingesting Torah, but not using it for our Musar, not performing what Torah is teaching us, that we're just going to get puffed up and full of pride and arrogance, and it will lead us to lose our life in this world and the life to come. It says that whoever uses the crown of Torah for personal benefit is liable to be uprooted from the world. So how would the pursuit of honor cause a person to sin or vice versa? How, how can it cause other people? Well, it says the answer could be obvious. A person who's preoccupied with his own prestige does not care about the honor of others. We can be so consumed with our own, trying to get our own honor, that we might even degrade others in their presence or behind their backs through some kind of Lashon Hara or the like in order to boost our own ego. So we understand that our ego can be our downfall. The more, so we have to be careful that we don't uh, <clears throat> boast. When we are boasting about our, maybe our own achievements, because we don't feel like others are boasting enough for ourselves, for us, and we want to just boast about everything and, and try to, well, sometimes if we, what we see is that when we boast about our achievements, usually what we get into is also expanding and building up um, something that perhaps we didn't actually do. So it's kind of of like taking that uh, to another level. We may have achieved some, you know, small thing, but when we want to boast about it, we will say usually that we did more than we actually did. I hope that makes sense. So the pursuit of honor can remove us from this world. And it tells us that a person who craves honor is never satisfied with honor. So <clears throat> if we're craving it, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> If we're craving honor, it becomes that thing that we just, or we cannot ever be satisfied because the more we get, the more we want. It's that narcissistic idea that we have to have more, 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 and we never have enough. And when this uh, well runs dry, then we go to another well and we just drink more and more and more and we're never satisfied, never uh, you cannot, when it is base, when it is the Etzahara, it's never enough. You know, we're told in Torah that someone who is a lover of money can never have enough. If you have a hundred, you want 200. If you get 200, you want 300. You can never be satisfied. So <clears throat> we're taught that um, the same is true with other desires, such as desire for honor. So a person who seeks honor can never be happy. You can never have enough. You can never, if you feel like <clears throat> you're not being honored by other people, you know, the, the uh, Roger Dangerfield built his whole uh, 
comedic one-liners about, I don't get no respect. And why was it so funny? Because so many people have that attitude. You know, I want this and I want that, but I don't get any respect. People don't appreciate me. They don't value me. They show me no honor and no respect. Well, how did that work out for Haman? It's kind of interesting how he wanted all the accolades. He wanted all the honor and he wanted all the respect. He wanted all the pompous, right? And what happens when the king asked him, what should we do to honor a man who has saved the king? And Haman thinks about it for just a second, right? And he begins to say, well, I think he should have the king's ring and the king's robe and he should be put on a, the king's horse and led around and saying, this is what is done for the one who honors the king. And he thought it was for himself, didn't he? But he was always wanting that, that honor, that respect. And because of that, he ended up being the one who had to give honor and respect for the one that he hated. So we're told in Kohelis that the lover of money is never satisfied with money. The one who loves and craves honor and craves respect will never be respected. And no matter how much someone tries to give them um give them honor to someone tries to uh, compliment them and let them know that they are valued, that they are respected, that they're appreciated. It's never enough if it's a person who is craving it and desiring it above all other things. So it's the same is true about all these other things that no matter how mental, much mental and physical energy we exert in our quest for honor, we're never content. What happens? We will always be left feeling depressed and disappointed. It will always elude us just as we reach out and think, there it is. I've almost got it. But no, it slips through our fingers. It's like it's like the one who's always craving more money and craving more money, the lover of money. It, even if they win the lotto, what happens? It's just like sand going through their fingers soon as it's gained, it's lost. And therefore, they're craving for more and craving for more, but never happy with what they get. So we have to always remember that when we are craving something, we're never going to be satisfied. And what's more, when it comes to showing honor, we have to remember that, that a person doesn't always have to prove to us that they have done some great thing that that they should deserve to be respected or honored or appreciated but first of all we have to look for the good in every person and understand that God is warning us that you should respect another person and give honor to them because they are my creation we're told um kind of a parable about uh, someone that is on their way to a Passover Seder and they pass someone on the on the road and they're obviously have passed away. They're dead. It's a corpse. And now then they have to decide which is the greater mitzvah to bury the dead or to go to the Passover Seder. And the Talmud explains that the greater mitzvah is to bury the dead. So when it comes to following Hashem and, and our mitzvot and, and the Torah's halakha, we have to remember sometimes we have to weigh it out, which is the greater. So when it comes to respecting a person and, and showing honor to them, what is the greater mitzvah? To um, only give them honor if they deserve, if they've done something that's respectable. Perhaps um, if they have disrespected us, then does that mean that we cannot respect them or shouldn't respect them? No, because the greater mitzvah is that we should respect every human being solely because they are a creation of Hashem. There's things that get in our way, ego, pride, and low self-esteem. These traits we have to understand and we're taught that sometimes 
we need to look at the opposite. It's important for us as we're as we're weighing out, measuring, right, our soul traits, Musar, measuring them, that we have to understand that we have to look deep now into our soul and understand that we need to know the opposite of the what we would call our foundational good soul trait. What is the opposite of it? Because the opposite is there also for us to use in the right time in the right place. Moose, our teachers insist that we make a clear distinction between honor that we ought to give to all souls, including our own deep inner being. So if we find it difficult to give respect to others, then we have to look and see what is in us. <clears throat> deep there in our soul, do we really respect ourselves? Are we showing honor to ourselves? And I'm not talking about pride, but if we really respect and honor ourselves, then what? We are going to take care of, number one, the body that Hashem has given us. We're not going to abuse it. We're not going to mistreat it, but we are going to respect it as the precious gift that it is. Therefore, we understand that um, if we don't respect ourselves and show honor to ourselves, then we are not going to be able to respect anyone else. So if you have, if you're finding that you have a hard time respecting other human beings, that you have a critical spirit toward others, then perhaps we need to look inside and see how we can change whether or not we are uh, appropriately respecting our own selves. <clears throat> so there are times when the opposite soul trait is required to be employed on behalf of other people. This opposing one should be awakened. The opposing uh, soul trait has to be awakened. So the foundation of our soul trait can be, our, the foundational soul trait has to be like temporarily forgotten. Um, sometimes we have too much empathy, too much compassion. And if we have too much empathy and too or too much compassion, then we can actually be harming someone else. So I know that you can think of situations where sometimes you have to be a little stricter and a little more firm when it comes to too much empathy. Because there are situations where if if someone you see always seems to be needy. And we constantly are just giving in, giving in, giving to them, making sure that all their um, needs are met and everything is taken care of um, monetarily and physically uh, to this person. Are we really helping them? Sometimes is it too much? Are we, keep, are, are we making them just dependent on uh, us for all of their needs and not helping to teach them how to look to Hashem for their needs, how to work and provide for themselves through Hashem's help. So you see, sometimes um, we have to be stricter. And there's a time we know that um, anger is actually part of our soul trait if it's used appropriately. And I always want to bring this up when it comes uh, to being passive and compassionate and um, just patient. Sometimes there's a need for us to look at what the opposite soul trait of that is and pull that in when it's necessary. There is such a thing as righteous anger. I know you've probably heard about that, but we have to be careful that we don't use um, that verbiage. Well, I'm doing this because it's righteous anger. Um, we have to be careful about that because sometimes we might want to just become mad and angry and take that out on another person and call it righteous indignation or so forth. But no, there is a time when compassion has to be set aside. That's the foundational um, soul trait. And look at the other opposite soul trait, and that is anger. And we see this when we look in the Gospels at Yeshua, when he goes into the temple and he sees that money changers have taken over 
those outer courts. And these money changers were us were usury. They were uh, instead of um, uh, charging a small amount for a pigeon, they were charging a, an absorbent amount of money in exchange for for a pigeon or for a dove and so forth. And this made um, Yeshua very angry. It was righteous anger. And this was the time for him not to have compassion. And it was not the time for him to be patient. So he did what? He took a whip and with righteous indignation and anger, he overturned the money changers tables. He broke open the dove cages and the pigeon and he drove them out with a whip. So we can see that there is a time that we have to understand what the opposite soul traits are. Very important. So um, it says equally off the mark is our tendency to rue other person's good fortune instead of celebrating them. We talked about that at the beginning of our lesson today. So the other person's elevation must also rouse us to joy. So <laughs> if someone at work gets a raise, someone at work moves up and gets a new title. We have to um, celebrate with them. And if we just are angry about that and we start thinking, I should have been the one that got that. I've, I've worked here as long as they have. I should have gotten the raise. I should have become the manager or supervisor in this place. And if we become angry and we're not able to celebrate with them, then we will lose the honor that we have. We will lose the position that we have. We may even have to take a cut in pay because we have been so dishonorable. So it tells us here that Rabbi Chodeh says we must remember that his elevation and honor doesn't take anything away from us. It, it We're not losing anything. So we're not losing anything if we celebrate with others when they get something new or they get a new position or they make a, a higher wage. It says we will become free from thinking about ourselves and when we see only someone else's who is doing well and we will be glad. If we are able to celebrate with others good fortune, then we can get rid, it will help us get rid of that desire to be honored and respected and to have more and more and more. So it says that in the Musar tradition, this is called developing a good eye. So if we can learn to celebrate others' good fortunes and not be so critical of everything and value another person, first of all, simply because they are a creation of God and understand that, guess what? We are creations of God too. And therefore you and I are worthy to respect ourselves and give honor to ourselves and not get into depravity, but respect in honor and what? Gratitude. Be thankful for one another be thankful for yourself. Be grateful to Hashem. And this is why we wake up every morning. And with gratitude, we give the first thing that we do. Even before we open our eyes, as we say, Hashem, thank you that you have returned my soul to me. That have another day to for giving you glory for Avados, for service toward Hashem. We are so grateful. And I just pray that as we are expecting miracles in our lives through this time of, of the month of miracles, we have to get rid of egos, this egotistical idea of, of ourself and always being so consumed with our base desires. You know, um, as I was reading uh, some of our literature, uh, Rabbi um, Moranus says, you know, it's difficult sometimes in this day and age to get out of, of just being so consumed with our own self when there's literally magazines on, on display that are actually called self. The magazine, I know you've seen it, self. And what about the other one? Us. 
<laughs> so it's just what teaching us, teaching other human beings to be self-consumed. They could think about yourself before someone else to work on self to make self more beautiful, more desirable, more this, more that, all about me, 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 what I can do for myself, how I can be honored and respected, how I can have more and gain more for self. But we're told in parables that even if you have everything, even if you have barns full of everything, and you just want to sit back and say, you know, I have achieved everything in this world. I'm going to just sit back now and eat and drink and be happy. But what does Hashem say? Don't be a fool like that. And remember that even today, your soul may be required of Hashem. So we cannot get consumed with self-pleasure, self-gaining um, uh, more and more and more provisions and material, and becoming materialistic, basically. But we have to look to Hashem and we have to first honor Hashem. Why? Because he wants to be a God to you. He says, I am and I created you and I want to be a God to you. Not we are not our God. We don't worship ourselves. But first, we must worship Hashem. Let God be a God to you today. Let him he is worthy of all of your honor, all of your respect, and all of your service. You were created, you and I were, recreate, were created to give service to Hashem. And by doing that, we are creating worlds. Instead of destroying a world, create a world today by showing honor and respect to Hashem and giving your avados, your service to Him today. I thank you for being with me. I so enjoyed every one of you. I can see um, some of the chat, but I, it's difficult for me to concentrate and read everything. Uh, all of your wonderful uh, input today. But I will, if you'll put some things in comments later, I will be sure to uh, comment and and return um, the uh, chat to you. So I I just encourage you now to just. Empty self, empty your soul of self-seeking and self-desiring and prepare yourself to cross over. You know, today in Jewish history is when we crossed over the Jordan. So if you look at Jewish history for today, this day is when we had prepared ourselves, had gone through this mikvah, and we crossed over to what? The promised land. Each one of us has been given a promised land, has been given a world by Hashem. So as we cross the Jordan today, which is what? The Jordan means transition. So today, make this a day of transition for you. Cross over with the rest of us. The priests have gone before us with the Ark of the Covenant has gone before us. The Jordan at flood stage has catapulted into the air and it we are walking across on dry ground once again and guess what our enemies are looking on they're standing there and what is this what does the scripture tell us that all of the men um at um jericho it says when they saw us crossing over and that the jordan had uh once again the waters had parted before us they saw and knew for sure that God is with us. You see, their hearts melted within them. They had no strength to pursue us any longer. And as we walked around Jericho, you, you'll, you'll remember that not one arrow was shot toward us. Why? Because God is now pursuing our enemies. And we are free now to worship him and give him all of our service and honor due him. Well, Bizrat Hashem, we are crossing over together. This is a great time for transition. And we will prepare now as we've crossed over to take the Passover lamb to, to honor Hashem. You know, he calls us up three times a year. And this is one of them, Pesach. Be there. Don't, don't let this pass by. And remember, 
that Pesach also requires your Pesach offering. So pray and ask Hashem, what, what monetary value can I give toward this Pesach offering? You will be blessed. B'Shem Yeshua.